Joy and welcome to my studio. Today we're going to be working on beading the top of your gourd and also teaching you how to take it further down and showing you some other little beading uh, tricks and tips as well. The one thing that I want to start out with is a gourd. The, and I'm going to work on round, but you can work on any kind. But the one thing I want to do is I want to saw my gourd so it is flat on top instead of angled in. The, actually, the one I'm going to be working on is a little bit angled in. I did come back and try to flatten it a little bit with my um, sander, but it is not as flat as I would like, and a flat one would be easier. So keep that in mind. I then went ahead and spray painted the inside with black spray paint. If you're not familiar with that, there is a video on my uh, YouTube links as well to help you with that. But I did sand my gourd. Now you can do any type of process underneath this, but what I'm going to use and do today is going to be the oil paint sticks. And I just really like the shine and metallic look that I get with it. I do have a video on that as well on my YouTube site. So if you have more questions about that, I probably go into it a little bit more detail there. Um, I am using the artist paint sticks and I did pick these up from Blue Well arts and I will post that information on on my video as well at the end of the video so that you know where that information is and these are iridescent paint sticks oil paint sticks they're oil paints in a little stick form is what they are so um, I know a lot of you were really concerned about the price there's 16 colors but if you break it down into 16 colors and if you broke those down into instead of thinking about them of a bottle of ink or something along those lines and they last forever it seems like then you really are getting a good money's worth or value you also can buy them in a larger stick form if you needed to buy one or two at a time go to your art store and start collecting them that way and then you can start building up and then they'll be reasonable now they do get a film on the top of them so you have to kind of remove the film and when you're not using them store them in a plastic baggie to help keep them from drying out and so I just kind of remove that top form. Now remember this is just the way that I like to apply them and I did sand my gourd pretty well and I tried to get the blemishes off so we're going to see how it colors covers over that blemish there as well. And I like to put them on with my fingers and I am going to put this in three different spots and as you can see I am just going here and there and then we're going to take our finger and we're going to rub it in. Now my rim is also going to be painted with black acrylic paint. When you're spray painting, don't try and hit that with your, with your uh, spray paint. We'll come back and uh, paint that after we start to let this dry. We are going to let this dry 24 hours. And I have all mine going the same way because it shows every little fingerprint or thing on it. So when I get done, I just have them all going the same way. That way you don't see them going different directions. This is the lighter of the greens. And in the YouTube video, I do show you the difference between iridescent and the other oil sticks and I do not care for the other oil sticks at all but I love the oil sticks as one of my favorite ways to color a gourd because you get this rich look to them. Now I do keep it wet towel so I can switch colors and this is the darker of the blue in the set. Blue just turns out so rich. And I'm going to use that one at the bottom right there. I think I have three of them on there. And when I'm bumping up next to this color, I just kind of blend the two together. If you need to take another finger that doesn't have anything on it and do that, 
and do that. And remember, this is just the way I apply them. There is no right or wrong. We may have to put a little bit more. When there's blemishes, just come in with your paint stick a little bit more. And that's why I do like to sand them a little bit better. When I'm working with the oil sticks. Bring that second finger in. And we're going to go to the bottom. And I'm going to start from the inside and try and get that all nice and out there. And when I tell you these things, remember, this is only the way I do it. I always tell you, try different things. I wouldn't be here if I didn't try different methods. So if you have something that you think you might like, then try it. There is no right or wrong. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, then you know it doesn't work. is the silver color. A lot of times what I'll do is when I'm beading, I will take the color of the beads and do them. Pick out my colors from there. So that's something to keep in mind. Actually, that wasn't my silver. That was my darker color, which I didn't quite want yet. To keep that more for the design. So let's take that off a little bit. want to use that to make some swirls and I leave my mistakes in my videos for a reason it's because if I mess up something chances are you're gonna mess it up so you need to see how I fix things so you can fix them so now I've got the silver back in here and see how much darker that other color was than the actual silver I have a lot of people tell me they appreciate that I leave the mistakes in, but ugh, we all do it. If, if I'm going to mess up, chances are you're going to mess up too, so it's better to see how to fix it. You can see how the fingerprints really stay in there. So you want to make sure that you're working on a board. And you could always start at the bottom and work your way up. So if your fingerprints would be more at the top, then you could get rid of them. But I always try to have a gourd wide enough at the top that I can stick my hand in it and work it from there. That's always real important to me. You can hardly see that we have that dark color there now. So this is turning out good. You can do any shape. Design, it does not matter. And I'm sure people have different things that they like to put it on with, and you may find something that you like better. I just know that I prefer my fingers when doing this, but that's just my opinion, like we talked about. That doesn't mean that it's right. That is just the way I do it. Wipe my hands here again. Get a fresh start. Really rub it into those blemishes. If you don't have enough, go back and put it over again. You can let it dry if you want to let it dry. And you could also do a second coat over the top of it if you wanted to as well to make it even that much darker. I usually find that one coat is more than enough for me, but again, like I said, don't ever let somebody talk you into something that you want to try or do differently. There. Out of 
not into. I wouldn't be here today if I'd listen to everybody. Okay, now we're getting that really pretty, nice color in there. I'll try one more layer on here right now, just on that top one. If you have to go back and add another color that you previously did, that's all right as well. There's nothing wrong with that. between a lighter blue and a gold, which one I want to do here, and I think I'm going to go with the gold. I'm try and stay out of those other colors because they're darker. So, and I have got a couple of the the dried up pieces from the gold on here, so I'm taking those off. You don't want to get those on there. But I'm going down and try not to bring that color back into the top of that gold. So we have another section over here we're going to do. You also could start out with like your lighter color, which would probably be even more like the gold. I'll go to the darker colors. If you're worried about walking some of that color back into it, as you see, if I get it in there, I just go and wipe it off and do it again. It's not that big of a deal. Trying to blend it into that blue just a little bit. Now on this design, I'm going to add a swirl to it, and just to give it some style. Now my video, I have you showing how to do some stripes and some different things as well. Now this is where I wanted to bring in that darker color. And so I'm just going to come in here and put a swirl. And you can see how I hit and missed kind of on the thing. You can bring it to where you're just hitting just a point. Or if you don't care how that kind of looks, if you think that gives it a more interesting look, then do it that way. And I kind of want them starting in different starts and finishes and then also have some going the other direction. I think it just gives it a real unique look and you can do this by alternating your colors as well you don't have to use choose just the the darker color on the 
purple, you could use a darker color, and you can use a purple on the silver, or, you know, just different things like that. And you don't even have to do every one here. purple would look like on here. You, know, you can do as many as you want, as few as you want. So I'm going to go up and do this guy. A little bit different. Keep your fingers clean in between the two so you're not really transferring another color on there. And I just rub just that one area. I try not to rub too much of the other part of it as well. And you don't have to stick in the colors. You can do one that goes over a combination of all of them. the other part on him so he's not quite liking that as much. So I'm do something more like this. Now you can see how your oil is picking up everything else so you want to try and keep this a little bit cleaner than I had. And this is from the inside of my gourd. All the stuff that came off of that. So try and keep that cleaner when you're working. It's easier than when you're trying to shoot a video. And if you don't like that, then just do the first part that we talked about or just do them in sections. It don't have to be anything that I showed you today it can be totally different so we're going to let this dry for 24 hours we're going to paint the top of our rim with black acrylic paint and then come back and we're going to start showing you how to sew the beads on all right now that our oil paint sticks have dried and I've painted the black with the black acrylic paint we spray painted the insides before we started I come back and I varnish them with a couple coats and I like to use the polycrylic and with these I like the gloss because the beads are bright and shiny so I want this to be bright and shiny but also don't get caught just thinking about um, one style of gourd we could also do it like on a canteen gourd with a top and the bottom set up so it stands up like a vase and I'll have that one done a little bit later for you to look at as well another thing I wanted to tell you if you were kind of pushing time and this guy was a little bit tacky he hadn't quite dried all the way it hadn't been his 24 hours up, or up yet I just made sure I had all of his fingerprints out and then I went ahead and varnished him and this dries him because the varnish dries so you can kind of cheat that way if you needed to hurry the process up a little bit so we've got these all ready to be so let's get started to string the beads I'm going to use Sanu and I like to get the kind because this is a little bit bigger than what I'd want in my needle and if you see it comes apart and some of them have even more than two of these but the really great thing about Sanu is it's not only really really strong but it's waxy so it helps keep the beads in everything in place so that's the reason I do that so I pull about two yards or six feet off and I take that apart so I have one strand and I thread that into my needle now this is a beading needle but I also would maybe suggest a needle as long as it can go through your beads that doesn't have a sharp point that way you're not picking up the snoo and dividing it and going through that so like a needle point needle without a sharp point would really be nice we're going to be using sequin pins 
and these are half inch sequin pins and I've tried all kinds of different things nails and pins and all kinds of things and these are the smallest kind they make um, which is the half inch and you can usually find them in the pin section in the craft store if you're having a hard time send me an email and we'll see what we can do for you on that and I'm also going to be using some crazy glue um, also like nail glue anything that's a super glue that dries really really fast we're going to be using those as well so the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to start with an awl and uh, when you want one that has a little bit smaller tip and as you're working with this make sure that you don't break the tip off and don't realize why the hole isn't punching if you do that you want to get a new one but you can find all the different things this one actually came out of one of my clay tool packets so don't be surprised if you have a set of clay tools and you have that in there also your bead reamers and different things where really good as well. Now when we've got our gourd we want to make sure that it is wide enough. I wouldn't go much smaller than this because you want to be able to put your pins into this and push them down and if it's too thin they might crack or split your gourd and you don't want to do that. If you did have one that cracked or split you could put quick wood on it and fix it again. Um, if you have a chance of thinking you're going to go through the gourd, go through the back, not the front. You don't ever want to run your pattern. If you have a pin that comes through, you also can cut it off as well if you needed to keep that pin. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to poke my awl, go in the angle of my gourd, about half the length of my sequin pins. Let's see if I can put this on here so it doesn't quite wiggle around. This is to hold your beads onto and to string your beads and I really like these. They have them in the beading section and they have bigger pieces of it as well but I always put my needle on it so I don't lose my needle to keep it intact. Now we're going to be pushing the sequin pins in and half the trick is putting half of the hole in there with the awl. That keeps them going in straight. If you try it with a hammer or different things like that, it doesn't want to go in straight. If you bend one, pull it right out with your pliers. Don't even try to push it in. So we're going to be using a thimble to push it all the way in. Now I have a thimble with lots of ridges on it and I picked this up at Walmart. You might want to make sure that it's got like this waffle nose on the end that keeps your pins lined up straight. So when we're pushing this in, you just take this, put this in the middle of the thimble, and I came through that other side already. So I'm gonna try one more time here. Make sure I'm going with the angle of the gourd. I just move my hole over a little bit. This gourd may have too much of a curve right there. We may have to switch to our different gourd here. Let's give this one more try. I thought it was a little bit flatter. And see, it's not easy for me, especially when you first try this. It's not as easy as you think or as I make it look. So don't be discouraged. Just keep on trying. You might even want to try a couple of practice pieces before you get a gourd that you would like. So, Okay, now on this first one I'm not going to push it all the way in. I'm going to push it where the, the pin will not bend as much and I'm going to take my thread with my needle on it and I'm going to tie a knot onto it. Now this first knot I'm going to take and I'm going to go two times through the loop one, two, and there is a name for this knot but for right now I can't remember what the name of it is and we're going to tie it really tight and then the next time we're going to go the opposite direction and we're only going to do one. Now we do want to go ahead and do our 
quick wood, excuse me, not quick wood, our super glue at this time. And I've got mine glued on a little bit. Should always check that first. And you want just enough, just barely to cover that dot. This guy's coming out real slow. Sometimes it can come out really fast. Okay, we're getting closer to the end right here. When I get this close, this is going to be my last one over here, is I'm going to make sure I kind of evenly space these out. So I'm going to go ahead and put the next two holes in for both of those. And this process probably works on a Martin gourd or a gourd that's more straight up and down than around and real curved especially if you're working with that smaller one. I have done it with the smaller ones. I've also done it on top of the bottle gourds or the Chinese bottle gourds. So just kind of play with them and see. Each one is different depending on how thick they are. That's another variable is how thick they are. This last one going in here. Once you start it, you're going to be amazed how fast it really, really does go. And once you get used to the process, it's not going to be as hard as you think it's going to be. So we push that last one in there. Now I push those all in really, really good with my thimble. If you didn't push them in good, go back and hit them with the nail. You shouldn't feel any of those raised up, excuse me, with the hammer, kind of like you would a nail. Now, I'm going to tie this off next to right where we first started. And again, we're going to do through the loop twice and end up right here next to this nail. And then we're going to go the opposite direction, the other direction, one time. And get that absolutely as tight as you can get that and then we're going to come in with our glue and we're going to glue that knot again and you want just enough to make that knot nice and secure you don't want to worry about your your glue being all over everything especially when you get into the bead you're going to wipe that off don't let your fingers stick to the glue, so that's kind of important. Now I'm going to be working with an 8 millimeter bead, but I want to show you a 6. Now this is a 6 millimeter, and you can't really see where it is sewn on until you look really close in the rim. So if you were only going to do one row, I might do the smaller beads, the 6 millimeter beads. So we're going to start with an 8 today and hopefully I didn't get my needle into a knot and I think I picked up my other extra string over here and I have already threaded that and I wish I'd have got this guy just a little bit tighter over here we might watch him at the end we might figure out do something now we're gonna start with two beads and this is the first time an only time on this rim that you're going to do two and we're going to thread them on and what we're going to do is we're going to come through and underneath the thread in the area that we're going to and we're going to pull that through make sure it doesn't loop on you and that should be pulled through right where those beads line up and then we're going to come back through the last one. Okay. And I would need to get this tighter, so I'm going to pull this as tight as I can and make sure you keep that tail out there so that you get that don't get it caught up in everything else we're doing. We really want to make that as tight as we can. And then we're going to add a bead on. Now see how the nail is right here 
and we're going to, because the bead is going to be past that, so we're going to go underneath that on the other side of that nail. It just depends where your bead lays. And when we come back up, we're going to go through the bead and add a bead. Each one is going to be the same way. So we're going to pull this tight, and I'm going to hold that in place while I pull that nice and tight. Now remember how I told you this one has a lot more movement than the other technique I teach you on sewing onto the jewelry. That's just a little bit, takes a lot longer to do that process. Remember what I said about the sharp needle going underneath the sinew. We don't want, don't want to have that um, get into the sinew and divide it. And I try to hold it with my fingers kind of like I'm doing right now to get that nice and tight. And you're going to see that start to come together. So we came through the back and add one on. So we added, we're going under, And you always come back and go through the last bead you put on. So, putting this guy coming through him, keeping him nice and tight. And I got on the other side of that thread. That thread should be in the back coming around. So if you get on the other side of it, bring it through. So we've got one sewn. And we add one. So every time you come through the last bead, you add another bead. And depending on what side of that nail you are on, depending on where that bead lays, Come through that last bead. Now you can also see this kind of coming in a little bit. If we would have had our rim flatter, this would be sitting on top of the rim better. So it's really important to try and get that rim as flat as possible when you're cutting your gourd and then it won't have the tendency to curve in. I think with the, the heaviness of our other beads or rows that we're going to add to it, we'll be okay here. But like I said in the very beginning, try to cut the rim as flat as possible when you're doing it. So we're coming. And this should always be in the back and this should always be in the front. If they're reversed, then pull that through Going to add a bead, go under the thread. Now I stayed on this this side of the sequin, and it's going to pull it nice and tight. And we still had room for it, so that helps kind of tighten everything up as well. And through the bead. and add a bead. So other than the first two we put on, you're only adding one at a time and you're sewing it on. So you're going adding the bead under the thread and back through the bead. And it really is simple. Don't try and make it hard. Keep it as tight as you can. That will really help. And then it will go pretty fast. You'll be amazed. You could sit down and do this in an afternoon or an evening. And depending on how fast you are, you're going to get faster and faster with each one you do. Now see, I kept that one on the side of the sequin. That's going to help pop those up. If you could hold your hand right there and keep that nice and tight, have room to do that. Do keep that there tight. I need to tighten mine up a little bit. Don't get caught behind those beads. Make sure 
here. I'm always working in the front. And I'm going to tighten this guy. From behind, I'm pulling, pulling him out and tightening him up. You can hold on to it. It's easier to do that. I'm just trying to get my fingers out of the way so you can see as well. And the sinew helps keep these in place as well because it's waxed. See, when I'm doing it and I'm working, I hold it as much as I can. Now, remember, I said that's supposed to be in the back. So as soon as I get this going through here, I'm going to move that to the back. Pull that through and hold it there to keep it tight. And then we'll pull it there. Now this one I'm going to try and get on this side of the sequin pin to hold that all nice and tight. And sometimes what I do is when I'm working, if I have longer pant or and I don't want to get stuck in the beads or anything, I'll stick it into the gourd and pull it up from the gourd as well. And that seems to help me not get into things. So add a, go through the bead, add a bead, go under the thread. And then you're back. So there's three steps to going through the bead again. And every time we go through the bead, we add a bead. Through under the thread. So the thread was just our anchor to give us the base to sew the beads onto on that side. And don't get stuck in what I'm doing. Think of all the different things you can do, what you'd like to try, and go for it. I'm just giving you a way to anchor them on to get going. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this sewing this around the rim and then we'll start talking again when we get to the next level because I'm just going to keep repeating myself for a while here. Okay, now that we've filled up all of our beads, if you were only doing the top rim, you'd want to get these as tight without popping out as possible, but we want to kind of get it all filled in. If you're doing more, which I'm going to go ahead and show you more, we want to make sure that we have an even number of beads. So we've got to count these and make sure that they're even. 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 30, 32, 34, 36, 38, 39, and I wished 40. I'm going to try and get two in here, and this was that spot that I wish I'd had gotten a little bit tighter, and I almost need a little bit more thread right here. We'll make it. So we're going to put two more in that space. If you are only going to do one, just kind of pull it around and put it right there and it will be okay. But we want to get two more in here. And another reason is we're tightening this all up by putting the extra bead in here as well. So it's going to make it all kind of pop out. And this next one I'm going to anchor on the other side, the original side that we started on, 
to tighten it up as well too. And it's going to help push all of that out. Now don't lose your spot where you're at. If you have to pull that bead back up to figure out which is your last one, then do that. Now see, that's going to help push that all out to make it better. And let's see, which was my last one? That one's my last one because we still have to come up through that. And not only are we going to go through that, we're going to go into the next one so that we tied off where we started. So we're with that one. And we're going to now, and I, like I said, I wish I'd have had a little bit more on him. We're going to knot this off again and tie that down in there. And do it the other direction. We did two, one, two through the loop, pull tight, one through the other loop pull tight. Now what you want to do is we're going to tie our next string on but then we want to make sure that we glue that. If you were just doing that one you'd want to just glue that there. Now see that already looks better. That's already popping back out because we put the extra beads in there and that looks so much better. Sorry for bumping the camera there. And I have my other half so I'm going to first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tie onto this piece again and I looped that twice get it all the way down there as much as possible so I don't have it loose I'm going to run those through in a while here And now the other direction. This guy's not cooperating with me. Okay, get that little guy out of there. Let's try him again. and tight. There we go. Got him nice and tied up against that other one. So I'm going to go ahead and glue these guys. Now remember you don't want to get that on your bead. And if you have fresh glue, it's going to come out really, really fast. If you have older glue, it's going to come out slower. So just be really careful with it. If you get it on your fingers, do not stick your fingers together. So I'm going to keep that out there and let that dry. Now the fun part for me is threading my needle. And when I do this rim, I start with an 8 my next speed is going to be a six millimeter. I'm going from larger to smaller, and then I, if you want to go back, you can go smaller to larger. So. Get this needle threaded in here. This is always the hardest part for me. And like I said, you can use a bigger, stronger needle as long as it goes through your beads. That's the only thing you have to make sure of. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to leave that while that dries and we'll come back in and we'll tuck our tails in and I'll show you that in, in just a minute here. But I want to go ahead and get this started. I'm going to go through one bead. So right next to this guy where we put the knots in, that's also going to help to hide all those tails and everything when we get done. And pull that through. And I'm going to put on three beads. And again, these are six millimeter. My first ones were eight. 
So we're going to start making a little triangle look. So we put on our three beads and then I'm going to skip a bead and go in the next bead. And sometimes you have to move that out to get that in there. And I'm trying to show you for you to be able to see it as well as me be able to do it. Uh, it's kind of a fun thing. So now we've got that coming over. Now I also want to show you, see how you can kind of see the sewing in between this? That's another reason I'd like to put the next row when you use the bigger beads like that. But it also helps cover up that rim. So if you had a little bit wider rim, this is also going to help cover up the string and the rim. So we've gone through there, so we're going to skip that guy and go through the next one. And I know I'm going to get my hands in the way here, but... And stay out of these tails. Keep them over there. And we want to keep this pulled as nice and as tight as we can. And I'll show you a trick in a little bit here too on helping keeping that nice and tight. So we're doing three, three beads every other top bead. And pulling that nice and tight. And I actually don't want to put these in until we come around with this next row because if you go through a bead and then you come back through it, you have a tendency to knock those tails back out and we don't want to knock them back out. And you can see how this is starting to lay nice and flat now. So that's really good. And by kind of working with all the things that are thrown at you, it teaches you more. So if you have a gourd that had a little bit more of a slanted rim, you'd know what to do. If you had one that you had to work with. So this part is really easy. So we're just going to do the three and I'm going to go ahead and go all the way around the rim. And then we'll talk a little bit more when we meet up on the other side. And I'm going to stick all my tails in there and try to keep them out of the way till we get there. Okay, we've got all the way around our rim and we're coming to our last bead that we're going to skip. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to go through this first one that we went through when we started to end up. So we're going to find the hole there. I know it's there. And we're going to come through that first bead. Try to keep all those tails out for just a little bit longer here. Pull that up nice and tight. And see how that started to lay down a lot nicer now? Now, if you were only doing this rim like I did on the one with all of the beading on it, you'd stop at this point in time, tie off, and then we would hide these ends right there as well. But we're going to go ahead and show you how to keep on going. So I've gone through this bead, so I'm going to come down. And when you're adding beads like this, you've got to now, the top we had to have odd. Now we've got to do, or excuse, even. But now the rest of them we've got to put an odd number of beads on. So that we always have the one at the bottom to come through. So we want to make sure that that's real important to remember when you're adding. Now I'm going to add some small, we're going to drop them down another size and I would say these are four millimeter black beads and I'm now going to be putting five on. 
And so now I'm going to come up on this bead and I'm going to go through that. And make sure it comes to a point and then pull it. And again, this is probably where your um, bead pad is really nice to lay your beads on. It'd be really to pick the, easy to pick them up with the needle from there, kind of using it to stabilize the gourd. Now, see how we're starting to get a real nice look going here, kind of a fringe look. And like I said, you could stop at the first row, you could stop at the second row, you could stop at the third row, or you can keep on going. It is totally up to you on what you do want to do. Now, of course, this is going to get faster because these beads are easier to get through. Now, remember, we want to keep this nice and tight. We're going to tie this off again, just like we did the other two layers in a minute here when we feel we've gone too far because we don't want that thread sagging. I found that if you don't tie it off it will kind of sag on you. You want to keep that nice and tight so it's real important to make sure we do that. Don't get your beads tangled up in the other rows. See we're starting to get that nice look. I really like that. So I'm going to go ahead and go around this rim and this should be a piece of cake for us. Okay we're coming in to round the final bin here. One of the reasons I picked the oil sticks is because I think that goes so well with the beads. I like kind of the iridescent looking type beads. They really add a lot to them. We're doing our final five and we're going to go through that first bead that we started with. And we're going to talk to you about adding more rows but I'm going to stop with this row. So we're going to come in through the speed that we started with and we are going to finish him. Now if you could add as many rows as you wanted to, and I'll show you the other bead and we'll talk about that, you would just keep on going here, you just knot it again. Now what I'm going to go ahead and do is show you there's a couple things you could do here. You could go up and come back over here and tie off if you were close enough. But I'm going to pretend like we were a few rows down and I'm going to tie off. So I made my loop and I'm staying right in the same crease between the two beads. I'm not going over a bead at all. Half the trick is staying out of the other beads and I'm going to do two that direction and we're going to pull this nice and tight and that's kind of just how we did the other one but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go the opposite direction and I'm going to do one tie the other way and then I am going to run my needle through the beads. Now it doesn't matter which direction you went. You could go any direction, but I think it's going to show less the knot if I go through the black beads. And sometimes you have to do a couple and then turn and go the other direction. But what I want to do is leave this up just a little bit. I'll show you why in a second. And I'm going to go clear up here just because I can in those beads. So I've left this little part right here and we're going to come in and we're going to glue that little part and then once we get some glue on there and we know that, then we're going to go ahead and pull our string tight. So we're going to get some glue down in there and we're going to pull this really, really tight and you don't want to wait very long because your glue can stick. So we've got that tail all covered up and that we've got glue on that knot and now we're going to pull this nice and tight 
I'm going to cut that off because you don't want any of that. And we've hit our string. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go up to the top. And we've glued all these guys. So it doesn't matter about getting them out. And you, what you can also do is you can cut them and try and get them all going the same direction. Or you can get one or two of them going one direction rather than going the other direction. There is no right or wrong on that. Just whatever you can get in your needle and whatever way you think hides the knot a little bit better. I'm going to see if I got both of these. If I only got one of these, I'm going to just go with one. Got one and a half. That kind of is a bummer. So I'm going to turn this around. Now this is another reason you want to leave this longer is so that you can take your needle and work it back in. And I think I got mine so short back at the front that I'm going to have to um, thread my needle once I've got it in the beads which is a pain. So that's why you always want that at least four inches or more. Let's see if I can do it the other direction easier. Okay, so we've got that guy in there. So let's see if we can get this other one. Hopefully it won't take as long since we're only trying to put one in, not two. So back through the beads. Be careful with your strings and competition. This is a great thing to do for competition. Cover up your beads. Never let them be able to see your strings. They count off big time for that. So it was really important to hide your strings. Make your knots nice and tight in between your beads. Okay, we've got him in. I'm gonna pull him all the way tight. Make sure you have that nice and tight. One more now. You're gonna see hopefully how quick and easy this is to thread. There we go. First shot up. Now I'm gonna go the other direction with him. And I'm gonna go back through the two silver beads and I'm gonna go down to the white. Too. Another thing you could do is pull him clear up into that rim, but I think that's going to hold him nice and tight there. So everything looks really secure. We've got them all glued. So let's get rid of these tails now. Nice and tight up there. What really starts to get hard is if you cut some tails off and had to go back and tuck them back in again, then that's you do that just take some of your beads off and make your tails longer like I said that's what I should have done in the beginning is just added a new one on now see those are the little frizzies I've kind of talked about just make sure you get all those little guys all nice and removed and everything okay so we've got three layers on him which I think is a really good part now I'm going to talk a little bit about this guy here now if I was doing another one, you could go even smaller. You could even go seven smaller beads here. And I think that's what I kind of did on this one. Yeah, I did seven smaller of the silver beads. And then I went to, again, four of these, but a large one in the middle. So I started going back up. I went smaller and I started going back to the larger beads because your gourd is growing. So you want to make sure that you have enough room. Now on this one, I did the larger silver beads with the silver smaller bead in the middle so that we could sew our round thing in. And I'm going to give you a bonus. I'm going to show you how to kind of do the round circles. And this gourd over here, they are all done. The circles are all done the same way no matter how big or how little they are. So I'm going to kind of walk you through a couple of those and show you how to do those and then turn you loose to create your own wonderful beading cord. I went ahead and did the rim of this one using the 8mm beads and I wanted to show you. See how you can 
see where they're sewn on and you can see the pins a little bit where if you have the smaller beads you can't see that but that's really really pretty from the front and the back and it covers all the rim so you do have your pros and cons but I wanted to finish this off since we had such problem with our last one showing you how long your pieces should be and then we want to trim them so we're putting them into the needle at the same time and I probably should have got a bigger needle it would have probably been a little bit easier my needles getting really bent here but they both went in really easy this time is and that's how you're supposed to do it so now we're just gonna come up from the back right where we tied it really tight and we want to run this through however many beads just to hide our tails and I had already glued it with my super glue so I have that all nice and tucked in and that's how a tie is really supposed to work and how easy it's supposed to be so we've got that one done okay we're gonna work on some of our circles now, like I was telling you, all of these circles are basically done the same way, but I'm going to start out with bigger beads instead of the smaller seed beads so that it's easier for you to see. And I'm going to start out with probably two yards, six feet of the um, Sanu again just in case so I have enough. Once you start working with it and you're doing a smaller one, you're going to know, know how much you need for each one, depending on how many beads and how many times you go around in a circle. Now, I'm going to start out with an 8 millimeter bead, and you always want to start with an 8 millimeter or a 6 millimeter. I don't suggest going any smaller than that. Now, I went through the bead, and now I'm going to loop back through it one time so that I have a string on that side. Now I'm going to loop again on the other side. So now I have one on each side. Now to keep these in place we're going to do them one more time. So I'm going to loop that again. And if it comes loose, pull this bottom part, and that's what tightens it. We're actually not going to knot this off until we're all completely done, and that's what we're going to tie off to. So we've done two, and I'll show you, two strands on each side. So kind of pinch them together so that they're both together. Now, like I said, I'm going to start out with my smaller beads, and if lots of times I would be using my seed beads, but I want you to be able to see it. Now I didn't mention earlier there is different colored snoos, but I think the neutral color is the most neutral for all the different colors you're working with. I did try black and I didn't like it as well. I thought it showed up too much. Now what I did is I picked up two of my little beads and this is the one time we're going to pick up two and we're going to go under both and well, sometimes with the Sanu, it's a little bit tougher to get under both of these. This first one's always the hardest because it will split on you. So you want to make sure that you're under both of the Sanu all the way and that you didn't pick up one part and leave a part. Now, once you're completely under that, you're going to come back and go from the bottom that you just went through you're going to go back through that bottom and to the top of that last bead. And we're going to pick up another bead. And now it's easier because you can go back under here where you've already picked it up and go back under the sinew again. And then you're coming back up where you just went that through so that your bead is always sitting towards the top. The hole is always pointing outwards. So we're going to do one again. Now remember we did this a little bit different on the rim. We came up behind it and went through the back part. So we're not doing the side. We're kind of doing it opposite because we went through here and came here. We're not doing that. We're coming up from the bottom this time. 
So what that is doing is leaving us a little space right here to sew our next layer onto. So remember that is different than how we did the rim. Otherwise, if you did your rim like this, all of your top of your beads would be sticking out, which I don't think would be as pleasing to the eye. Make sure you keep that tail. I don't want it to get mixed up with the other ones. So I've gotten four in there, five in there. I have one more room for one right there before we jump sides. So we're going right under that. And sometimes it'll hang down to the side or pop out. That's okay, just pull it. And then by the time you get this in here, it's going to straighten out when you sew it back on again. So don't worry about it looking funny until you get that second one. Then it should just lay right in there, nice and tight. Okay, so now we are going to jump over to the other side. I'm going to pick up a bead and go and pick up underneath. Remember to get underneath those all the way. and come up underneath that bead to the top. Pick up one more. Do the same thing here. You always want to take the smallest bead you can get next to your big one in the first row because this is what sets the how many beads are going to be in a circle. If you're working with seeds beads, you're going to get 11 in the next row because you're going to have 12 loops. And it'll make them 12. And it looks like we have room for one, maybe two more. We'll see how many we're getting in here. You want them nice and filled, but you don't want to have it so full that it's popping or making it stick out. And I don't know if we're going to have room for one more or not. Two, four, six, eight, ten. I think we'll have room for one more. Want to make sure that that's laying down nice and smooth and not crowding the other beads. If it is, we want to take it out. And I see how this is popping out. It's it's too crowded. We don't want to have that in there. It's just not going to lay nice. It's not going to lay flat. So we are not going to put that last bead in there. We're going to remove him. If you take your needle and go the area you had with the back of your needle, that way you shouldn't catch any of the, of the thread. Sometimes you can do it without unthreading your needle. We'll see here. Nope, I caught that last one. So we're going to unthread our needle. Pull that guy out. This is good for you to see. And I'm going to be honest with you, when I'm working with a circle, I have to sometimes work several different beading techniques, or excuse me, sizes, to figure out what I'm going to use and try different things and, and take it out. Sometimes that you spend more time doing that than the actual beading itself. And that's okay. Don't get frustrated with that. Sometimes I get frustrated and you really, really shouldn't. That's part of the beading process. So we're not going to put him in. So we're back to just 
just our last one. And also your wax builds up in your needle hole. So make sure you kind of clean that out. And sometimes that can be why your needle won't thread so easily is because you've got wax build up because our Sanu has wax on it. So sometimes stop and clean that out. Alright, so we're back to where we were with this last one. So what we're going to do on this last one is we're right here, and this guy's first. Remember, we didn't go through him. We put him on. So now we're going to go right down the center of him, and we're going to go right down the center of that bead. And we're actually going to come out on the other side, and you want to try, instead of having it pop out there, you want to actually try and go through one of the beads on the other side. And you're going to do this every time you're done with a row to start the next row. So pull your tail out. You don't want to get that guy stuck in anything. And pull that guy nice and tight. And then we see we have that nice circle right there. So we're ready to start with our second circle. Now you always want to go to beads that are bigger than the one you just worked on. If you're like a two, four, six, eight, but even sometimes that isn't quite big enough. Sometimes you have to even jump up another size. Now, I messed up because I was busy talking to you instead of telling you what I'm doing here. So let's start this row over. So we're going to take our next size beads and I'm going to put two on again. And you only put two on in the beginning of each row. Now, so this would be your first bead. So we're going to go in your second bead. And you're actually going under this little um, thread right here that we've created a row for. And we're going to actually do the same thing we did. Only instead of going under the thread, we're going in each pocket. And then you're coming up underneath the bottom to the top of that bead just like we did the last row. Now you always want to keep the bead in this same area. If it's starting to pull over to the side, you need to either think about going to a bigger bead or putting two beads like every other one do two beads. You can try that as well. I've worked with, done that. But like I said, sometimes getting the size of the bead is a frustrating part. Don't get frustrated. And you also can leave a little bit of space in the thread because this is going to be your next row. So just make sure your bead kind of lines up right here. But see our thread for our next row is right there. So we're going to take one more bead. Go under the next two beads where the thread is. And we're going to pull that nice and tight. And that's looking really good. Under that space between the next two beads, up from the bottom of the bead through the top, and once you get your beads set up, you're going to be really surprised how fast this goes. And just hold on to that little tail to keep him from getting intermixed with any of that other stuff. And make sure you're spacing those out enough that one doesn't have all that string. Through the next speed, we've got just a couple more here on this this one. And into the bead, through the thread and the next one up from the bottom to the top and 
our last one here. Now see this guy's pulling a little bit so make sure you move him over so you don't go back into this guy again. You want to really be careful with that and make sure that you're aware of where you're at. So this is our last one right here. So we're going through him up through the bottom. Now remember what we did last time. We're hooking our two parts together. So we go over to our next speed and we go down the top of him, down the next bead, through that center bead. We're going to try and come out this other side. And I'm hitting the bead, so I'll probably have to come out the other side. And then we'll go through those beads. I'll show you what I mean. Now see how we've got the thread around, okay? So we're going to go through this guy and we'll go up through this guy to get back up on top again. So now we need a bigger bead. Now this is going to be our last row. So on your last row, you want to add a bead in here so the thread doesn't show. And sometimes if your next bead isn't big enough, if you add two, like one bigger and one smaller, that helps fill the space as well. So I'm going to do a black. And I think I'm going to do another silver and another black because this is, we're putting on the first two again. So we're skipping that first one, we're going into the second one. So we have to put this guy on as well. So now that we're done, we're going to go up through the bottom, just through our last bead. Okay, so now we're ready to do the next one, so all we need is one silver and one black. And we're going to go through the next space. And up through the bottom. So you see how we're starting to get our shape here. And if you'd add another row, you wouldn't have put that bead there. But see how that's helping cover that up? You could have even done probably a couple smaller beads on each side of that as well. But we're doing it kind of bigger so that you can see how it works here. Now that one is that one. So we want to go into the next one. Up from the bottom. Just in the last bead, sewing that on. And now remember what I told you, don't think that he's not there. And if it's not filling enough, you could do two and one every other one. So do one bead, and then the next one if you needed to, you could do two and by that I mean going into it twice. So we're starting to get the rest of our circle here. And just play with it. Take your beads out, kind of line them up from big to small. And normally I start with a seed bead like I said a couple times. and. I'll show you that in just a minute here. And up through the back. We're just going to finish this guy off. Our last one. Now 
now pull him up through there now we're getting ready to go into this guy but he doesn't have a bead between him yet so we've got to put a bead between him so we add the bead go through the last one back through that bead below it and the other beads not at the angle so we're going to stop a second go through that bead through the center bead out the other side and on this one this is our last one so instead of going through the beads on the other side we're coming out right where the string is on the other side and we're going to pull that nice and tight now make sure that it's loose enough that it's going to lay down so we have our nice shape here loosen up just a little bit more Got that outside just a little bit tight okay now to end this we're going to tie our knot again we're going to do our two over over and really tight and I shouldn't have pulled it that tight because I messed with my so got that back out and then we're going to go the other direction one over and pull here to our tails cut them both the same size made sure we had them long enough that we could thread them with our needle and see I had tons left over of my thread so we didn't need that much at all depends on the beads how many rows you're doing everything else probably could have started with a yard on that so we're going to try and put both of these through the needle and yeah, it seems to be giving me the biggest problem this whole video ready my needle and it's hard to hold the in the the needle the direction that the hole is I don't know why that's been so hard this video I've really had a problem with that so what we're going to do is we're going to hide our tails again so I'm going to hide them on this inside row because that is right next to Actually, they don't go that direction. Remind me of that. So we're going to take them and run them up some of these beads. So take the closest one. Now remember, we haven't glued our knot yet, so we don't want to pull this all the way tight till we get some glue on our knot. So we're going to pull it up. And I'm only going to pull it that far. And here is my knot still. So make sure you put that through before you glue it. Because once that glue goes on, it starts to really glue right away. the glue off of your beam and pull that really tight so that it is all gone and hidden now and once you've hidden that you can go ahead and trim your ends and you have your circle now I wanted to at least start you on 
a circle using the seed beads now that you've seen it larger and then using um, a two millimeter bugle which is like your bugle beads your long narrow skinny ones only it's smaller I think it's about half the size if not more and I'm gonna start with a six millimeter bead this time I can thread my needle which like we talked about today seems to be the hardest part of this video you would have spent 20 minutes just watching me thread my needle if I hadn't added some of this out okay and I have an iridescent bead and glass beads are really pretty too and they seem to have a little line at Walmart right now that has some really pretty ones so we've got our bead we're going to do start out just like we did before leave a long enough tail we're going to come up to the bottom and we're going to do loop on one side loop on the other side go back to the first side and back to the second side and we're going to start with our seed beads and it's kind of important to get nice seed beads because they're consistent in size when you're doing this fine of beading and you either visit a bead store because the ones that you find in Walmart and stuff aren't always consistent in size I did find these in Joann's and they were very consistent in size and the price was very reasonable wait for them to go on sale they usually have them go on sale for 50 percent off I think on 50 percent off I paid a buck 99 for them and they're gonna last a long time and if you notice they're kind of in a black thing but they were really good beads I was very pleasantly surprised so we're gonna start with two of the beads remember each row starts with two and then we're going all the way under both of the strings on one side and we're going to come up through the bottom of that last bead now this is where you'd have to make sure that you're absolutely using a beading needle to get in a smaller bead so we added one go up underneath that and through that so I'm going to go ahead and put these all the way around and I'm going to get six on one side and five on the other side remember I told you they're not always going to lay straight till you get them pulled over by looping it so I have six I'm going to jump make sure your threads are together make sure you pick up both of those threads on the other side also there's a bunch of beading stuff out right now go to Pinterest Google it bring up all that kind of fun stuff adapt it to your gourds hey I think that's 11 let me check two four six eight ten eleven so we have a little bit of space but this guy's sticking up a little bit so if you bring him down he's right next to that one if you try and put another one in there it's probably gonna pop out so again we're going down that hole of that first one coming out on the other side and then try and come out one of those and then pull that nice and tight and see up on top how good that looks and how that shininess adds so much now these are the little bugles I was talking about and these have a little bit of a twist into them and I really like to use them on the next row if I'm working with a seed bead. The bugles are too long and don't do well. I have tried doing like one and then two every other one, but it doesn't quite do as as well. Now we're gonna. This is gonna be our only row. So what we're gonna do is add our first one, but we're also gonna put a bead in between each one so the thread doesn't show, and our second bead. So we're going to skip our first one, go into our second one, go under that thread, and you're going to come up back through your last, your last bead there. So you get this nice little 
So we're picking up a silver bead, going through the bugle bead, and picking up that. So you're going to get this nice, cute little circle. I love this little circle. I've created a bunch of jewelry using it. You could do just one circle and make a pair of earrings, a little pendant for a necklace, just by using this technique. I'm also going to show you how we would tie this into our gourd in just a second here. Okay, so the silver's first, then the bugle, then underneath the next one. And you can see with these two millimeter bugles that they're laying down really, really, really nice. That's making such a a pretty little pattern here. And I'm going to go ahead and finish this row up. When we get to the last one, I'm going to talk to you about it. Okay, we're to our last one here. And I have put the bead in, but I haven't put the silver between the two into this last one. If you were doing a gourd, and see how I put this size of bead between these two guys, because I knew that I was going to sew him on. So all I would do on this last one is loop him through, and then I would take and go down that last one and like we talked about go down through that other two now because this guy only has two sides we don't go through him to the other side because the thread is on this side so we would pull this nice and tight and tie him off right there and then he would be right onto your gore just like that so you have that cute little circle guy right there and however many beads you want to do on him. Now, now that we've done with that guy, see all of these were done that way. Each one was just bigger and bigger and then on the last one, take and put the second bead in so that you cover up all of your threads. I got to ask a lot of questions how I did this. I measured the length of my bead and I drilled the holes and I would put a bead on and then I would bring my needle up to this empty space here up and then put a bead on go back through here come a space ahead put my bead on so I'm always coming through a space ahead and those are really simple just put them on just like those those are again the bugle beads and those are probably six um, millimeters long or whatever they call those so those were quite quite long but you can do it back and forth but if you look at every single one of these these were done the same way the tiny ones inside going to larger and larger on this last one I had room for three so I put three beads instead on there but they're all done just by doing this was a seed bead a little bit larger bead the next bead with the silver bead on the outside they're all done that way now how I attached them was I took a Dremel with a round bit on it and I dremeled a half circle into the gourd so that I tested it the bead would sit right down into it flush, kind of flush the bottom half of that so that it had an anchor and then I glued that on and what I do is do was I put tape to hold it into place and then after that was done I would move the sides back and put a little bit of E6000 and you actually could do that at the same time that you were gluing it in put the E6000 there and just put those just make sure you don't turn your beads and just tape that into pl uh, place and I use painters tape on that to hold that and glue that into place and that's how I got the different circles to stay into place now one that you wouldn't need to would be like this piece here because he is he dips in the middle I would just glue him straight on right there and that's what I may do with him is just glue him just in place just just like that to get a nice uh, design in the front of him and that's a canteen with the 
the middle part or where the stem or the bottom would go up in just to get that design right there and that would look really really pretty as well so just start using your imagination that's just a basic to show you all the different things that I've created but just don't get caught up and thinking you can only do it a certain way as you know I always tell you just to let your imagination go wild if you have any questions about the process please email me at art at miriamjoy.com go over to our website at miriamjoy.com for any of the tools that we may have used or um, check out our link for our YouTube videos because there's a lot of things to help you there as well and I hope you enjoyed the class. Make sure you check out for more of our classes. We're continuously trying to grow those. And I will be working on a couple other different beading projects as well. I hope you had a great time. God bless.